chili. It's a bit early, but uh, may we open the doors now? Not just yet, Mr. Hovell. I'd like a few moments to look round before. Yes, of course, I quite understand. This must be very upsetting for you. Yes, Mr. Hovell. I don't want to watch it. It's sad enough to see one's possessions displayed like this, but to watch them being sold, bargained for by strangers. But if you'd like another moment or two to look around. I've seen all I want to, thank you. I shall be upstairs if you want me, with my granddaughter. Very well. Before I have to leave, just once, just once more. Emily, come and help me pack. Coming, Grandmother. Finally got inside. Yes, but it's not what I expected. No, it's not up to much, no, is it? No, it's very run down. I wonder if we shall catch a glimpse of old Mrs. Betterton. Up there, Stephen, please behave yourselves. Dad? Hey, you two. Yes, Jenny. Come on. What do we do if we see something we like? You simply look at it, that's all. You can't afford to bid for anything. <sighs> Sheila. Don't tell me that you suddenly decided that you don't like the house. No, of course not. It's not that. It's just so depressing seeing someone's personal possessions displayed like this. Cheer up. Come on. They say this house has been in Mrs. Betterton's family for generations. Well, I'm not surprised. Hello there. Hello. Mrs. Clare. How do you do? Hello. Mr. Clare. I didn't expect to see you here. I thought you'd be far too busy. No, we left it all to the removal man. No, I don't think there's anything here I want. Mabel! Mabel, I'm sure. Yes, I, I'm sure that's him. I wouldn't know. But I'm positive that's him. Oh, look! Oh, do stop that, Mabel. What on earth would you do with an elephant's foot? Please don't be too distressed about what you see here. It'll all be cleared away this afternoon by the time you move in. Thank you. It's a good crowd, isn't it? Good crowd. Considering there's a big sale on in Bath this morning. Is Mrs. Betterton still around? Oh, yeah, she's upstairs. She's taking it pretty badly. Still, it can't be any fun at her age having to sell up. She doesn't want anyone to see her. It's very sad. Yes, indeed. 
I'll be quite honest with you, Mr. Clare. If Mrs. Betterton hadn't been quite so anxious to sell this house so quickly, my firm could have got a much higher price than the one she was asking. Yes, we've been very lucky. Yes, it didn't look quite so run down the last time we saw it. Our oh, house is always a bit of a mess on auction day. I'm sure it'll look a picture when you've settled your own things in here. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hey, Stephen, look. Colour plates for regiments. It's not in very good condition. Here's the life of Thomas Chatterton. There's Scotland. The cover's a bit torn, but the plates are OK. How much do you think it'd be? You can't buy that. Why not? You've got a bid for the whole lot. All of these? Yes. Dad says he can't have anything. Then there's no point in looking for a book. Uh, Mr. Hobble, Sir? is there a frame for this? Uh, no, it was mounted into the wall over there, actually. Formed part of the fabric, as a matter of fact. Well, I like it very much, very much indeed. Oh, yes, Mabel, that's him all right. I'll go to speak to him. Why not? You don't know him. But I've seen him, haven't I? Oh, I'm so sorry. You're Mr. Clare. Timothy Clare, aren't you? Uh, yes. Oh, I, I went to your concert the other evening at the university. I did so enjoy it. It was lovely. Thank you very much. I went with my son. He goes to all your concerts. Oh, uh, this is Mrs. Rowley. This is Timothy Clare. Conductor of the Bristol Chamber Orchestra, as I was telling you. Oh, yes. How do you do? How do you do? Mrs. Rowley and I go to all these local auctions. You know, they're so interesting. Looking into other people's homes and seeing their possessions. Mind you, we had expected much more here. Mm. This is not up to much, is it? It's very run down. Have you met old Mrs. Betterton? No, no. No, well, she always kept herself to herself. Oh, no, I, I haven't met her yet. Oh, she's very strange. Well, I wonder who the new owner is. I am. Oh. Oh. How nice. Well, one can do a lot to it, I'm sure. Uh, come along, Mabel, we'd better go on looking. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Uh, goodbye. Quite interesting, isn't it? Yes, very. Yeah. It was the first thing you noticed as you came into this room. You know. Do you think it will fetch a big price? I doubt it. Fine art people don't rate it. Are you interested? Yes, I am. I like it. Well, we'll have to see how things go. It forms part of the house, really, anyway. Excuse me. Do you see the children anywhere? Oh, they're about somewhere. Oh, what have they found over there? It's not British. No, German. World War One. I hope it's not loaded. Don't be daft. Bang! May I? Ooh, that looks a pretty grotty lot. Just right for a jungle zone. Careful, Stephen, it'll break. Oh, it was the soldier's hat. A helmet. Oh, it's filthy. Can't see any markings. I wonder how old it is. It's all rusted up. Oh, who'd won that? Might be quite interesting. Come on, Stephen, leave it. Follow me. Lot one is to be found in the north. Ladies and gentlemen, lot one, grandfather clock. Excuse me, ladies. Grandfather clock in working order. Oak, eight day, painted face. A fine piece of furniture. Circa 1820, 1850. Now, what am I bid? 200, anyone? 200. 200. 250. 300. 300. 300. 350. 350. 400. 400. 400. 450, anyone? 425. With the gentleman, 400. Selling at 400. Sold at 400. Your name, please, sir. Uh, Williamson. Bradford on 8. Williamson. Bradford on 8. Victorian oil lamp, lot 167, extremely popular these days, starting at uh, 16th, eh? Working order, I understand. Should come in handy for the power cuts this winter. 10 by. 
Ten. Eleven. Twelve. 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 Fifty. Selling at twelve fifty. Fourteen. 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 Fifteen. Seventeen fifty. Seventeen fifty. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. 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 Yea or nay? Twenty pounds. Selling at twenty pounds. Sold at twenty pounds. Your name, sir. Williams. Oh, William. Williams. Grab it on eight. Yes. Lot 168. A bird cage and sundry other pieces. No wonder the bird has flown this one. Ah, I'm not quite sure about the age of this. Suppose you might use it for uh, plants? <laughs> Any reasonable offer? Pound. One pound. One pound. One pound ten p. Hmm? One ten. One fifty. One sixty. Selling at one sixty. Three pounds. Three pounds ten. Stop. Three seventy five. Four pounds. Timothy, do something. Stop. Four no, pounds let 50. him learn. It's his Christmas money. Four eighty. Can't you stop the bidding? Five pounds. Uh, five pounds. You don't want to rest no, your hands. Five pounds. Like I do. Five pounds. Okay. Five pounds. Five thirty. That's enough, Timothy. You've got to stop him. I have five thirty from the young man. Five thirty. Selling at five thirty. Sold five pounds thirty pence to the young man. Your name, please, young man. Stephen Clare. Master Stephen Clare. Give me a fifty p. Oh, Master Stephen Clare. Give me a fifty p. This way, young man. Stephen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes the sale of items in the house. Thank you. Follow me to the walled garden. That's yeah. fine. Thank you. Oh, Stephen, how could you do just silly things? It's my money. That's no excuse to waste it. You've just blown all your pocket money for a couple of months or more. I had to have it. Well, what are you going to do with it? Clean it up. Oh, it's rubbish. Oh, what's that? Uh, lot 78, 3850. That's right. Oh, 3850. Yeah. Yes. Uh, was the chair? We threw in a little table as well. Who bought that? Um, we'll soon be out of your way now, Mr. Clare. Oh, it's no bother. I'm glad you got the picture you wanted. I'm very reasonably, too. Thanks very much. Oh, it's all part of the house, really, anyway. And what about you, young man? Are you pleased with your purchase? Yes. Just about mortgages, pocket money for months to come. <laughs> it's fun trying to get a bargain, though, isn't it? Has Mrs. Betterton come down yet? No, she's still upstairs. I'm just popping up to have a word with her now. You'd better leave these here. We'll take them upstairs when Mrs. Betterton's gone. Come on, Steve. You've got so much to do. Now, food in the kitchen. Now, that suitcase can go upstairs. Just leave it there for now. Oh, Mrs. Clare, Mrs. Betterton will be down in a moment or two. Oh, I didn't realize she was still here. Perhaps we'd better wait until she's here. Uh, I don't think she'll mention. We can put everything in the waiting room. Oh, yeah. shall I take this upstairs? No, empty the van first. We've only bothered it. Well, uh, Mrs. Betterton, have you got transport? No. Would you like me to get a taxi for you? Oh, there's no need, thank you. I'm going to a friend ah. just nearby. Oh, you haven't met, have you? Mr. and Mrs. Clare, Mrs. Betterton. How do you do? Hello. How do you do? Will you excuse me now? Uh, now, are you sure you're all right, Mrs. Betterton? Nothing more I can do for you. Nothing, thank you. I'm very sorry that we haven't met before this. I didn't consider it necessary. Oh, not that I intended to appear rude, but there didn't seem to be any point. Oh, we'd so love to have talked to you about the house. It's a house, Mrs. Clare. There's very little I can tell you about it. Yes, but you have lived here for some time. Yes. Hello. My name's Jenny. I'm Emily. Is Mrs. Betterton your grandmother? Yes. I live with her. My mother and father are abroad. Here. You must have this now. What is it? Shh. Take it. Don't let my grandmother see. But I can't just She wouldn't it. like it if I took it out of the house. Your grandmother? The lady. You'll see her. She'll like you. Who? Emily. We must go now. All right, Grandma. You mustn't be afraid of her. She's very kind and... Lily, do come along now. I was just coming, Grandmother. Come. I have to be very careful of my granddaughter. She hasn't been very well lately, and... Oh, but we must go. You must be anxious to have the house to yourselves. No, there's no need for you to hurry. Well, we've got things to do, too. Goodbye. Goodbye. I hope you'll be very happy. Thank you. I know we will. Goodbye, Mrs. Paul. Goodbye, Emily. Oh, dear. Now, what's in all that? Shoes, mostly. Upstairs, then. In the big room, Dad. No, upstairs. Jenny. Where's Jenny got? What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'm Come sorry. on, help. Oh. 
Jenny, another tea chest for the kitchen. Ben, don't try and carry so many books at one time. You'll only drop them and tear the binding. Does everything have to be washed tonight? No. Oh, I don't want to wash in other place as long as I live. Yes, I feel like that sometimes too. Come on, help me lift this. There isn't time to read the books now, Ben. Just stack them. I'm looking for something. There isn't time to look for anything tonight. I'm doing a school project on Brunel's two steamships. I want your book on Brunel. You mean you want to borrow my book? Yes, if I can find it. See you, all right. She sounds fine. Didn't you hear me calling you? Sorry. Oh. oh, Stephen, look at this mess on your bed. Look, you're going to ruin this bedspread. Can't you do the sort of thing on the floor? Sorry. Put it away. Oh, and clear these clothes off Ben's bed. It's late. I want him to get some sleep. Sure, in a minute. No, Stephen, now, please. Okay. Oh. Oh. It's the worst room in the house. Had to be seen to first thing. You going to be all right? Hmm? Up here? Sure. It'll be a super room when Ben moves out. Hmm, yes. Well, oh, Stephen, please, would you take that lamp off the bed? That's how fires start. And please, will you clear those clothes off Ben's bed? Right. Now. Is that okay? Well, it looks better than the bare patch. I think it looks quite good, though. I'm glad I managed to get it. Stephen was upstairs messing around with that silly helmet. Come along now, Ben. Put that book away. It's time you went to bed. Can I just finish the last chapter? No, you can't. Come along now, both of you. That boy's room. It's the, one of the first things that needs doing. It needs replastering. Mm. I was looking at that this afternoon. Oh. Hasn't been done for years. Come along, you two. I said upstairs now, this minute. Come on. Come on, it's late. I'll be upstairs with you in just a moment. A Ben and no reading in bed. No. You haven't noticed my picture. I'm sorry, Tim. I really don't like it as much as you do. I think it looks fine, though. Oh, well. I guess I'll have to learn to live with it. Well, I've done all I can for tonight. Stephen was cleaning that filthy helmet on his bed. Oh. He had oil tins and rags all over the place. Are you too tired to go over my concert schedule for me? Just let me sit for a few moments. Hey, Ben, 
I think I can get it clean, Ben. Look. You sleep, Ben. Never mind. I'll show you in the morning. What are you thinking about? Silly. Silly thought. Like what? Like what I'd do if your American tour really did come off. Oh, and what would you do? Buy a new washing machine. Wouldn't it be more sensible to buy a new car first? Well, we don't need a car. We can use the orchestra's van. And it's not for our personal use. Oh, well. Perhaps if your tour really did come off, we could afford both. Keep your fingers crossed. I have. For days. Well, don't stop. Morning, Steve. Come on up, you get. Oh, Ben, come on. Wake up. Feet on the floor. That's it. Now, listen, Ben, you've got to catch two buses to get to school from here. So get a move on. Breakfast in five minutes. Hey. You've really been working on this. Leave it alone. Well, what's the matter with you? Nothing. Just leave it alone. I don't want you messing around with it. Don't want to touch it. It doesn't interest me. Oh, good, you're up. Now, as you don't start school till next week, can you give me a hand? Yeah. Sort out the chaos. Okay. Coming! Breakfast in five minutes. I told you I had to go early this morning. I'm sorry, I forgot. I've got to get petrol for the van, pick everybody up, and be in Bath by nine. When will you be back? Five. Five thirty at the latest. The concert's at two, so we shall be finished by three thirty or so. Bye. Bye, bye. Don't do too much. Oh. Get the boys to help you when they come back from school. Yes, I will. Now, have you got all your music? Yes. Bye, darling. Bye-bye. Come on, boys. It's getting late. Sorry. You haven't washed yet, Ben. I know, I know. Well, hurry up. I didn't know Brunel built three ships. Get bushed. The Great Western, the Great Eastern, and the Great Britain. Put that book down and get washed. You're going to be late for school. Did you come across the poaching pan last night? No, it must still be packed. Oh, oh Steve, how do you want your egg? I'll just have some toast and marmalade. It's, it's all right, I'll do it. Where's Ben? Washing, I hope. Oh, he should be washed and dressed by now. Ben! Ben, I'm not going to call you again. Coming!
Now, if you're late, tell them that we've just moved and you've got a much longer journey now. Yeah, but, Mum, it's the truth. Yes, I know. But whatever you do, now, don't rush to the traffic on your bike, I will you? I won't. Bye. Bye-bye. Ben is going to be late. Ben, come on. What's the matter? Are you ill? No, I'm fine. Are you sure you're all right? Yes, really. Go and have some toast. I'm not hungry. Well, you must have some I'm not hungry. hungry. Ben! things for me, will you? Oh. Would you make the tea, please, sweetie? Mrs. Clare? Yes, I'm Mrs. Clare. Oh, good. I uh, hope the road at the news agents that you might be looking for someone to give you a hand for the next few days. Oh, yes. That's right. Please come in. My name's Bond, Mrs. Oh, well, please come in, Mrs. Bond. We only just moved in yesterday. Yes, they, uh, they told me at the shop. I'm afraid it's all a bit of a mess. <laughs> yes, I can see that. I've made it. Oh, hello. Oh, good morning. It's our daughter, Jenny. And um, the two boys are at school. Oh, so they won't be in the way? No, no. But they're very good. Oh. You don't have to tell me anything about children. This is a big room. Oh, dear. Yeah. Um, yes, well, we need it for the piano. Still, it, uh, it won't seem quite so big once you've got all your furniture in it. This is all. Oh. Well, most of it. Would you like a cup of tea? Well, I... It's I... just been made. Well, that would be very nice. Thank you. It's a big piano. Yes, my husband's a musician. Oh, yes. Uh, plays at the Hippodrome, does he? Well, no, he's with the Bristol Chamber Orchestra. Oh, really? Well, uh, they said at the shop that you just wanted someone to help with the odd hour or two until you sort of settled in. Yes, that's right. Oh, Jenny, would you stack those things over there for me, please? Well, we won't know where anything is. Over there. You're not looking for anyone permanent? No. I couldn't take anything permanent. I don't really need the work, you understand. Only, uh, my daughter's just moved up to London to take up a splendid appointment, and uh, I find I have a little time on my hands, so if it's just a few hours now and again, uh, just until you've got yourself straight. Yes, that's all I need, really. Oh, God. Uh, if you could let me see the rest of the rooms and uh, show me what cleaning equipment you've got, and then tell me what it is you want me to do. Uh, yes, of course. But uh, you just finish your tea first. Where are you going? To my room. You haven't finished. Yes, I have. No, you haven't. You haven't put all those things out in the yard yet. All those boxes. Well, I'll show you upstairs. Is your husband famous? Well, he's getting to be. <laughs> hopes to do a tour of America soon. America? Yes. Oh, that's nice. Well, we hope so. Stay a bit. No, I... I wanted to thank you for the music box. It's lovely. You haven't told anyone I gave it to you? No. I don't know what my grandmother might say. Oh, look, I don't want to get you into any trouble. If you think you should have it back... No, no, you must have it. I'd better go. Well, when will you come see me again? I can't. Why? My grandmother. Has she told you not to come here? Yes. But why? Because of the lady. What lady? You didn't see her? No. I don't know who you're talking about. Well, didn't she come last night? Who? What are you talking about? Oh, you don't believe me either. She's there. She came to see me. And we talked to each other. Oh, Granny mustn't know I'm here. Emily, come up to my room. All right. Uh, but I mustn't stay long. Well, let's go around the front. I think Mum's in there. So, shall we say I'll do an hour or so tomorrow morning? Oh, yes, that would help. We'll give it a try. You'll pay my fares, of course. Yes, of course. Yes. Oh, look, must you use this door? Oh, well, sorry, but we're in a hurry. Hello, Emily. How are you? Oh, very welcome. Go 
girls are the same as the boys nowadays. No difference. <laughs> Running and jumping everywhere. Yes, well, uh, I think I can help you from time to time. <laughs> I'd love to hear your husband play. I like the piano. It's lovely, the piano. Bye for now, then. Thank you. See you tomorrow, then. Bye. Yes. Tell you. What's the matter? You won't believe me. You in trouble at school? No, no. It did happen. I saw it happen. Saw what happened? The helmet. Your helmet. I know you told me to leave it alone, but... Go on. I'm not making this up, I promise. I was scared. What happened? There was a glow. A very bright glow. I saw the helmet and it was bright and shiny. Is that all? No. I saw a face under the helmet. A face appeared under the helmet. I've seen it too last night. You did? Yes, and I couldn't sleep. Frightened me a bit too. What is it, you think? How can that happen? Don't know. Did you tell Dad about it? No. Why not? I wondered if I dreamt it. He wouldn't believe it anyway. But if we both told him? He'd think we were nuts. Yes, I suppose he would. If he was to see it for himself, he'd believe it then. But would he tell us? I doubt it. It's spooky. Mm. Hey, Stephen, what's that? What's that up there? Can you see it? No, where? Round the side in the creeper. Some coloured glass. Oh, yes. It looks like an old window. That's right next to our room. That's not possible. There isn't a room next to ours. What's the point of having a window without a room? I don't know. Come on, let's find out. Dealer, I'm home. I'll just go upstairs and change. Can you see anything? No. The creeper's too thick. Let me have a look. All my legs! Can you see anything? No. It's that creeper. We need something to push it out of the way. I'm sure there's a window there. Well, if there's a window out there, there must be another room behind here. It can't be. Look for cracks, bumps, any sign of something being covered over. Still at it? I got a woman to come in and give me a hand for a couple of hours tomorrow. Ah, good. That was great. Mm. Mm. There's some posts for you up there. Ah, thanks. Uh, what do you like? Bush Telegraph's obviously very efficient in these parts. Oh, she seems ideal. A bit grand. Perfectly happy to the odd hour or two if I let her know in good time and she's free. Oh, there's a cup of tea in the post you like one. Good. Oh, uh, no, uh, just have one. How was the concert? Quite good. Bigger audience than I expected. Uh, where are the children? Have they been helping you? Oh, the boys have only just got in. They're upstairs. And Jenny's had a visitor. New friend already? No, no, Emily popped by. Emily? Who's Emily? Oh, you know, Mrs. Betterton's granddaughter. Oh, yes. I remember. This lady, doesn't she frighten you? Oh, no. How does she appear? We'll be doing this. She likes the music box. Don't speak. She'll appear. I'm sure of it. She must. She's coming. She's coming. There. Over there. No. No, she's not. You made her go. Oh, stop it, Emily. I don't. She's gone. Oh, you were just pretending, playing a game with me. She was never there. Oh, yes. Yes, she was. You mustn't be like my grandmother. She didn't believe that I saw her either. She said that I was ill, that it was all in my mind. Oh, I don't want to hear any more. That's why she sold this house, to get me away from the lady. Oh, let's go downstairs. You're frightened. Yes, a bit. That's all, just a bit. Oh, you mustn't be. The lady won't do you any harm. She's very kind. Very kind and all. Oh, so sad. 
You don't believe I saw her, do you? No. No, I don't. You think I was pretending? Oh, I don't want to talk about it anymore. You'll see her. But she mustn't tell anyone about her. Promise me. Oh, hello. Come in, Mrs. Betterton. I'm sorry to bother you. Not at all. I wondered if my granddaughter was here. Yes, she's upstairs with Jenny. Do come in. I was getting worried. I was getting late. Would you mind calling her? I'd like her to come home. She's very welcome to stay a bit longer. I'm sorry, she can't. Will you stay and have a cup of tea? No, thank you. She's disobeyed me, Mrs. Clare. Oh, I'm sorry. If you'd just tell her I'm here. Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, Timothy, Mrs. Betterton's here. Why don't you go in and sit down for a moment? Oh, thank you. I I'm all right here. Well, I I'll just go and call Emily then. Can't wait out there, Mrs. Betterton. Please come in. Oh, well, thank you. But I can't stay. I, I mustn't stay. I'm afraid that we're still in rather a mess, but uh, we are getting things done slowly. I hope you've coped with your move better than we have. Oh, oh yes. Uh, I took a fancy to that at the sale. I gather that it always went with the house. Well, do sit down. No, really, thank you. Yes, it must be very upsetting to see strangers in the house that's been your home for so long. Well, it's been in the family for generations. I never particularly liked that painting. Did you tell Grandma I was here? Well, yes, of course I did. I must go. Oh, Emily, don't leave this behind. It's not mine now. I gave it to Jenny. Well, are you sure? It looks very valuable. I don't think Jenny should accept it. It's all right. I have no more use for it. No, Emily, I think you ought to take it back. It's very lovely, and I think your grandmother might be a little upset if she thinks you've given it away. I'm sorry, Mrs. Clare. You don't understand. It's mine. I can do it as I like. Well, I remember being told that the house in the background, the one that's on fire, was the bishop's house in Queen's Square. Do you know who painted it? Well, I was told that someone in my family painted it. Apart from that, I know very little about it, except, of course, that it had something to do with the riots. The riots? The Bristol riots in 1831. Oh, yes, of course. Emily! Oh, there you are. We must go. Sorry to have disturbed you. I know how busy you are. Not at all. <laughs> do let Emily come whenever she likes. Oh, Mrs. Betson, do stay and have that cup of tea. Oh, no, thank you. It's no trouble. We're just going to have one. It's very kind, but I'm afraid we haven't time. Mrs. Betson, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to interfere. But Emily has given this beautiful music box to Jenny. It's very sweet of her. But I'm afraid she really can't accept it. It's far too valuable. Thank you, Mrs. Clare. But your daughter may keep it. I'm sorry we've disturbed you. I, I, I promise it won't happen again. It's no trouble at all. Goodbye. Emily must come whenever she likes. <laughs> Strange lady. Well, there you are. Why Emily didn't want to keep such a lovely thing, I don't know. Take care of it. You'd better keep it in your room. Go and see if the boys are doing their homework for me, will you? Hey, Stephen, there's nothing out here. I can't hear anything hollow. It's difficult to tell. Class to Sir Lucy. What are you doing? We found a window on the outside wall, just outside covered in the creeper. So? So if there's a window out there, there must be another room behind here. The wall is solid along the landing. Right. Then there must have been a way in through this wall somewhere. Let's have a really good search. There's a sort of bulge here. Hey, look. A crack where a door frame might have been. Yes, the plaster's very loose. What do you think? We'll soon find out. You're both crazy. So, we do two concerts in Cardiff on the 28th and the 29th. Yes, I've got those. Now, that whole week's full now. Oh, and you're putting the Mozart into the programme in Cardiff. Am I? Yes, K467. Oh, yes. Uh, we've been asked to do a concert in Exeter on the 31st. You can't. I've booked you for a concert in Gloucester on the 31st. Second and third are free. Dad. Uh, not now, Stephen. But Dad. I did not now, please. OK. All right, so we do the concert in Exeter on the second. 
I think I should give them the Brandenburg number four. Oh, yes. That's lovely. Yes, the one with the two flutes and solar violet. Hmm. Who's this from? Uh, now, the director of the Bath Festival has been on to me. He wants to confirm his plans for this year. Oh, Sheila, this letter's been to our old address. Spangler's in London already. Oh, no. Yeah, he, he's due in Bristol for one night tomorrow. And we haven't got a concert. Oh, well, he can hear a rehearsal. You can organise an excellent rehearsal for him. I'd better ring him. Tell him I've only just received his letter. Well, I can't commit myself to the Bath Festival until I know what date Spangler wants us in America. Always bring his wife with him. Suppose we'd better entertain them, take them out to dinner. That'll be expensive. Let's entertain them here. They can see a bit of Bristol home life. That's for sure. Do you think it'd be all right here? Yes, of course. We don't want to be too ostentatious. Anyway, the fact that we haven't got the best silver or china isn't going to affect the way the orchestra plays, now, is it? Well, I should hope not. Ginny! Ginny! Oh, could you give me a hand, please? Come in. Ah, Mr. Spangler. Timothy Clare speaking. Right. Now, we'll wash all these and then put them away. Whatever are those boys up to? I don't know. Bye. Um. Timothy! Um. Pop upstairs and see what the boys are up to, will you? I always get suspicious when I see Stephen with a hammer. Oh, and did you talk to Spangler? Yes. He and his wife are arriving tomorrow morning at ten. I told them I'd meet them at Temple Meads and take them to their hotel. He's coming to watch a rehearsal tomorrow afternoon. Oh, good. Mrs. Spangler wishes to do a spot of sightseeing. Uh, I suggested that you might go with her. Oh, darling. Well, we've got to be kind if they're going to give me a nice fat American tour for nice fat American dollars. Are you going to America, Dad? Well, I don't know yet. Just you. We can't all go. Not possible. Oh, why not? I'll go and see what the boys are doing. I'd like to go, too. We'll have to wait for your father's rich and famous. Well, rich, anyway. Would you put that on the bottom shelf, there, in the cupboard? Jenny! What was the matter with you? I was holding it. Oh, that's my favourite fruit bowl. Um. I didn't drop it. Oh, come on, Jenny. There's no need to lie to Mother, me. Mother, I didn't. It just flew out of my hands. Oh, look, you must believe me. I didn't drop it. Upstairs. You've lied to me, Jenny. No, come on, upstairs. Just can't stand being lied to. There is something through here. Careful! A fruit bowl just flew out of my... Don't you see her? The lady won't do you any harm. She's very kind, but she mustn't tell anyone about her. Promise me. What's going on here? We tried to tell you. We saw this extra window from the garden, but there didn't seem to be a room to go with it until we found this. Yes, it does look as if a doorway was there. It is a secret room. Well, it's probably just an old broom cupboard. Well, let's have a look. We moved the furniture. That's where we found it. Yeah. I believe you're right. Here's a torch. Here's a torch. Come on. There's a window we saw from the garden. So it is a secret room. Oh, what a stink. Hardly well, surprising. It's probably been shut up for years. I hope shut it. Careful. Sorry. Don't worry. Look. How extraordinary. I don't like it in here. It's spooky. It's as if something is still happening here. Yes, I know what you mean. We'd better leave it. Don't be silly. There's lots more to see. You found something. No. You come away from here. Come on, we've seen enough. Let's go. But Dad, I said we've seen enough. Let's go. But, 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 out! Go on, out! A skeleton? You must be joking. In deadly earnest, as you may say. I've told the kids not to go back in there. Did they see it? No, and I'm glad you didn't either. I tell you, it gave me quite a shock. I thought you'd found some silly little box room, not a skeleton. What on earth do we do now? Frankly, I haven't the faintest idea. Do you think we'll have a talk with Mrs. Besseton? Well, I think it's probably a matter for the coroner. I'll have to find out. Oh, dear.
dear, what a time for all this to happen. It's time trying to get everything straight. And the Spangler's coming tomorrow. <laughs> you can't tell them about the skeleton. Oh, no. On second thoughts, they may think it's rather quaint. A skeleton in a secret room. No decent British home shall be without one. Oh, don't be so silly. Oh, it's just going to mean we're going to have to tell the police. Oh, I can't bear the thought of a house full of police and reporters and camera and everything. Oh, no. Oh, I'm beginning to wish I'd never set eyes on this place. Calm down, darling. Relax. Everything's going to be all right, I promise you. <sighs> Onion soup will give them smoked salmon to start with tomorrow night. No, soup's better. We can't afford salmon anyway. What do you think? Oh, why not push the boat out and give them both? After all, it's a special occasion, so long as John G is impressed. Soup and salmon? That's too much. Oh, Timothy, do please stop for a moment. Sheila, what's the matter? I don't know that I can cope. Of course you can. There's so much to do. I just can't do it all. Well, nobody expects to. After all, you have got Mrs. Bond. She can't do the shopping. Take Mrs. Spangler sightseeing or have lunch with her. Or look after the children. Hey, this isn't like you. It's not just the dinner party, is it? Hmm? Is it this house? Come on, out with it. It's better, right? Timothy, do you think this house is haunted? Don't be so daft. Why do you suddenly think it's that It's not sudden. No, finding that skeleton is pretty awful. It's not even that in particular. Darling, don't be silly. Haunted houses belong to books, with ghoulies and ghosties and long-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night. Nothing like that here. No. At least, I don't know. Well, this is a marvellous house. I love it. Yes. Perhaps it's just a feeling I've got, but... certain things don't seem to fit. When Jenny was putting that fruit bowl away, she said it just flew out of her hands. Oh, come on. I know. But that's what she said. And she doesn't usually lie. Just because a fruit bowl slips out of her hands doesn't mean to say that the place is haunted. Come on, forget about it. Why don't we both go make a cup of tea and go tomorrow shopping together? All right. Would you go and see if the children are in bed for me, please? Sure. Timothy, didn't you hear me? I was just thinking. Must be the nice lady Emily told me about. She said you'd come. Good night. You'll have to help me. Gosh, she's come out of Jenny's room. Lights out. Come on, it's late. We've all had a busy day. I'm ready. How are you getting on with the helmet, Stephen? Um, I haven't done much on it today. Oh, you haven't lost interest already, have you? Oh, no, I'm still going to clean Go, it up. Come on, into bed. Well, see you in the morning. God bless.
try anything tonight? No. You scared, Ben? A bit. Oh. I've had enough for today. I'm going to bed. Are you coming? You thought of places to take Mrs. Spangler tomorrow? Oh, there's masses of places. The gorge, the bridge, Great Britain. It depends what she's interested in. A potted history of Bristol, perhaps. <laughs> You've a busy day tomorrow, too. Oh, don't I know it? Mm. Isn't that the same tune you played me last night? I believe it is. How oh, odd. You must have heard it somewhere before. It's nice. And so, it's a strange coincidence. I'll try and call the coroner and find out about, uh, well, you know what. Mm. Secrets? Oh, yes, of course. I'll ask Mrs. Spangler to ring you as soon as I get to the hotel. Yes, do, but don't rush her. There's masses to do here. Heaven knows where I'm going to take her. Well, being American, she'll probably want to do the entire city in an hour. I bet she'll love the antique shop. Well, I can't show her everything in one day, and I've got to get cleaned up here before Mrs. Bond arrives. That is the darkest thing I've ever heard. Cleaning up for the cleaning lady. Let her do it. Well, I don't want to see the place looking like a pigsty. Janie, you don't need that much butter on your toast. Yes, I uh, do. That's a very fine music box that Emily's given you. Did you take it? Yes, I played it last night. In my room? I brought it downstairs to listen to the tune. Why? Shouldn't I have? Well, no. Yes. I thought I'd lost it. I put it on the mantelpiece. It'll be awful if it rains. I'm off now. And me. Oh, have some cereal. Haven't got time. Nor me. Oh. You've got time to eat something. Go on, do as your mother tells you. Well, I'd better go and meet them. Hope it all goes well. And with you, darling. Good luck with John G's package. Thank you. And uh, don't worry. No worries. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Dad. Bye, darling. Must be up. And me. Oh, look, you must have something. I've got time. Oh. Don't be late, then. We've got guests in for dinner, so have a tidy up when you get in, won't you? Bye. Well, as I don't have to go to school today, I'll help you with the dinner. Oh, Jenny, that is nice of you. There's so much to do, too. Is it that important? You seem in a real tiz. Well, it's probably the most important one we've ever given. And if it all goes well, touch wood, Mr. Spang was going to ask Daddy to go to America with him. Yes, I know that. Does it mean a lot of money? Well, we can do with it. Mum, did you tuck me up last night? <laughs> no. Did you have any of your friends in? No, of course not. Why do you ask? Oh, nothing. Mum, do you believe in ghosts? What a question to ask. I think I do. Oh, Mrs. Bond, what have you done? It was an accident. Oh, my only piece of Bristol glass. Oh, what on earth happened? It's so hard to say. Hard to say? It seemed to fly out of my hands. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Clare. You can take it out of my wages if you like, but it really wasn't my fault. Oh, well, we haven't got time to go into all that now. The thing's broke. Thanks for doing the vegetables anyway. Let's get on with the soup. Oh, a cup of tea. Americans really are amazing. She, she wanted to see everything, but everything. Still, it's all in a good cause, I suppose, if uh, Timothy gets his trip to the States. Oh, I'm sure he will. Hope so. As long as everything goes all right tonight. Are the children upstairs? In their rooms, I think. Miss Jenny's kept herself in the cell. She promised to help. Oh, is it that late? We're going to have to get their own meal tonight. Hello, darling. Ah. What sort of a day? Oh, went all right. Exhausting, but quite successful. How about you? Was Spangler pleased? Oh, and did you um find out anything about upstairs? Where the coroner is or anything? No, I didn't. You won't believe it, but uh, Spangler's so busy, we only had time to discuss his schedules. All I did was hang about. Oh, no. Oh, well, look, let's have a cup of tea. So, what are we going to do? 
Well, it's not too bad. We, we got on quite well. Now, you'll make another opportunity, and uh, let's just hope that your dinner puts him in a good mood. <laughs> oh, dear. And uh, if it's burnt? Uh, no chance. I wonder what the G stands for in John G. Spangler. Oh, something grandiose. Garfield, Galahad, Goliath. Sorry to interrupt, but there's a nasty burn on the tablecloth. Did you know? Oh, no, I'd forgotten all about that. Why Ages since we used it. But why don't you put the Bristol glass on it? <clears throat> we had a little accident. Not to worry, we'll think of something. Look, I've got to do some work. Hello, Dad. Hi, Jenny. Give your mother a hand, will you? Oh, Jenny, you haven't changed yet. There's plenty of time. You fuss over nothing. Oh, don't be tiresome. I've told you how important it is. Jenny, would you make you and the boys something for supper tonight? I'm sorry, but I simply don't have the time to cook for you as well. well can I get the boys a hamburger at that shop down the hill? Yes. Tell the others and ask Mark for some money. Oh, we were mad not to take the Spanglers to a restaurant. Oh, but I'm sure they prefer to be here with a family. <sighs> yes, that's what I thought. But in a restaurant, somebody else does all the work. I wonder if they like garlic. Don't you think some mint sauce would be nicer? Well, it's too late now. Oh, Mrs. Bond, I wonder, would you be an angel and have a quick tidy up next door for me? Oh, yes, of course, if you wish. What did happen to the Bristol glass? It's broken. It flew out of her hands. That's what. I know, it's just what Jenny said about the fruit bowl. Of course, it must be a coincidence. Oh, I was mad to attempt this. Now, take it easy, darling. Tell Mrs. Bond to look after the food. You go and have a stiff drink and a nice hot bath. If the water's hot. Relax. I'll look after everything down here. You go upstairs and then I'll come up and change. Hmm? Mm, bless you. Spangler sounds like a firework. I like dressing up. You would. I hate you. Stop arguing. You all look fine. Yes, let's have a look at you. You're a credit. Right. Am I all right? Perfect. Really? Well, you're the sloppiest, Dad. Thanks. But I'm allowed to look like this. I'm an artist. Oh, if I become an artist. Now, come along, everybody. We must get everything straight before they arrive. They're going to be here in just a minute. You've forgotten the napkins. No, I haven't. I can't find them. I found them. Put them in the drawer. Oh, thank you. Oh, Ben, would you put a log on the fire, please? You know how Americans are about central heating. Now, I'd better light those candles. Oh, Mrs. Bond, did you dry those other glasses? All right, everyone. Good evening. Hello, Hello again. Hello. Come in, Mr. Spangler. Nice. Uh, Sheila. How are you? Very. Uh, Sheila? Um, uh, Mr. Spangler? Hello. Hello. My wife, Sheila. Uh, How nice, nice to see you. Thank you, Thank you. Sheila. Sheila. I had a it's nice to be Just here. Wonderful. Let Thank me take you. your coat, Mr. Spangler. Thank you so much. Thank you. You haven't met the monsters, have you? Um, this is Jenny Hello. and Stephen Hello. and Ben. Hello. Mr. and Mrs. Spangler, all the way from America. Oh, Myrna and John, I insist. Oh, well, if you insist. <laughs> we do. What does the G stand for in John G. Spangler? There. That is a secret, my boy. Oh, go on, tell him. It stands for nothing. Nothing? Oh. Well, when I first came into this music business a long time ago, I thought the plain John Spangler sounded well, I thought John G. sounded intriguing. What a delightful <laughs> old room. Yes, do you like my panel? Oh, oh these old English houses have really got something. Nothing like this back home. I thought they were shipped out in packs these days. You're right, my boy, but it's not the same, believe me. My, what a colorful picture. I'm afraid it's rather dirty. Isn't that the Bristol riots? You know about them? Yes, 1831, wasn't it? My wife, she went up in Bristol before we came here. She knows everything. <laughs> That's the truth. She could have shown me around Bristol today. Well, even I don't know what the Bristol riots were really about. Yet you have this picture, really, Timothy. 
They were all to do with workers' rights and labor unions. Things don't change. Do and they? the right to vote. And all these poor people protested in your main square, Queen Square, wasn't it? We passed there. And it was terrible. Over a hundred people were killed when the soldiers fired on them in a single night. And some of your loveliest old buildings were burnt to the ground. My guidebook says it was just about the worst night in Bristol's history. <laughs> My, what have I said? Uh, Tim, why don't you offer Myrna and John a drink? Oh, yes, I'm Jim, so Leonard. sorry. Uh, we've a, a, a very nice sherry. Would you like that? Thank you. We can't come to Bristol without tasting the sherry. <laughs> Thank you, Timothy. That would be just perfect. John, do you know this part is called Clifton? Of course, dear. I gave the taxi man the address. But do you know what Clifton means? No, but I'm sure the children can tell us. Well, the derivation town means town, so this is the town on the cliff. I'm sure you're right, dear. No problem. No harm done. And this afternoon we went to see your ship, the Great Britain. I was surprised by how small it was. She was the biggest ship in the world when Brunel built her. Really? And she was the first iron ship with propellers. And Brunel also built the Great Western, which crossed the Atlantic 64 times. I thought the Great Western was a train. No, a railroad, darling. A train couldn't cross the Atlantic. There was a train, mm -hmm. but Brunel's Great Western was the first ocean-going steamship <laughs> and was built here, not in America. It's all ready, Mum. I wonder, could I just ask one small favor? Do you know I never had the pleasure of hearing your husband play this afternoon? If it doesn't interfere with the meal, could I just ask you to play something now? Oh. Of course I will. Just a little something before we eat. What a good idea, even though I'm ravenous. Perhaps uh, a little Beethoven. I'm sure Tim will be delighted. Forgive me. Now that was delightful. Is it an old military piece? Yes. <clears throat> oh, Mrs. Bond. Jenny, would you go and get the soup plates for me, please? Oh, John, would you like to sit there, please? Thank you. Merlin, perhaps you'd like to sit over on the other side? Timothy, come and sit down. Oh! 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 No, oh, no, oh, no don't oh, worry. Oh, so oh, really clean towels oh. quickly. Mrs. Oh. Bond, what happened? It, Mrs. Clear, I'm telling you, it, it felt as if it was being forced out of my hands. I, I couldn't control it. Oh, it's just too bad. Well, thank heaven, at least I bought the smoked salmon after all. Now, we better give the biggest portions to them, the large slice of lemon. Well, what are you doing? Frankly, Mrs. Clay, you can give your smoked salmon to the cats for all I care. I'm leaving. We're in the middle of a party, but, but you can't. Oh, yeah, I can. And I'll never set foot in this house again. There's something funny going on here, and I, I, I don't like it. She couldn't help it. I understand. Oh, please, Mrs. Bond, won't you stay? I'm sorry. My mind's made up. I can't apologize Our help enough. was new to us. No, please. Please, say no more. We've been looking forward to this evening, and nothing is going to spoil our pleasure, but nothing. I do hope the meat wasn't too highly seasoned for you. <laughs> no. No, I'm uh, very fond of garlic. Where do you go after this? Well, thank you, young lady. Well, we're going to stay with two lovely people in Stratford Apartment. Blood! It looks like blood! Can't be. But, but, but it's red! It's rust. It's either a leaking water pipe or someone's left to tap on. Jenny, go upstairs and see. This is most unfortunate, Timothy. We've obviously come at an inopportune moment. I think it would be better if we leave. Oh, no, no, please don't go. I I'll make some coffee. No, Mrs. Clare, I do feel it might be better if we left. Perhaps some other time before we leave. I think we ought to go, John. Yes, but you're leaving tomorrow. No, you're, you'll be hearing from me again, Timothy. I truly think it's better if we go. I'm really awfully tired. Jet lag, you know. They've gone. 
Now the trips have stopped. All that food wasted. I'm afraid I've lost my appetite. So have I. There weren't any taps left on. Jenny, I think you ought to go to bed, please. Did you see the drips? Yes, you couldn't avoid seeing them. It was blood, wasn't it? Yes. That's why the Spanglers left like it was a sinking ship. Oh, don't choke. What is it? I want to leave this house. It's unlucky. Shall we tell Dad about the helmet now? He'd say we're imagining it because we're in a new house or a new bedroom or something. He might not. He might believe us after last night. Yes, that was some party, wasn't it? Did you sleep well? How could I after last night? <laughs> Seems even worse than the cold light of day. The way that the Spanglers were driven out. I must call them to apologize. Yes. And you better something about that room upstairs. The boys can't sleep next door to that. Yes, I will. And another thing I've been thinking. Do you think it's legal for an estate agent to sell a house if he knows it's been haunted? I've no idea. I suppose so. You're not very helpful this morning. Oh, come on, Sheila. How on earth can we prove that the estate agent knew that the house was haunted when we bought it? How do we know that it's haunted? Come on. No, you come on. Objects flying out of people's hands, something that looks like blood dripping out of the ceiling, a skeleton upstairs, and that strange tune that you can't stop playing. Yes. I think it's the same tune the music box plays, the one Emily gave Jenny. It's horrible, and I'm sure the children are affected by it. Well, why do you think that? They're just not the same. Jenny asked me yesterday if I believed in ghosts. And do you? I'm beginning to. Oh, it's no good you smiling. It's serious. I wish we'd never seen this place. Well, we can't just get up and go. If you like, I'll have a word with the estate agent. But I don't know very much if he can tell us anything. He won't know anything about any ghosts. Miss Betterton might. She seemed only too anxious to leave this place. Do you know where she lives now? Near here somewhere. Jenny knows. I'll ask her. I have to get out of the house when she gets back to school. But even if Mrs. Betterton admits that the house is haunted, what do we do? Well, we'll have to leave here. I mean, it might get worse. Someone might be hurt. It really do exaggerate at times, isn't it? Morning, Jenny. All right, then. If that's what you really want, I'll ask the estate agents to put the house on the market. We're not going to leave here. Oh, we can't. Now, Jenny, please, don't interfere. But you can't mean it. I, I love it here. Jenny, there's something wrong here with all these happenings. You're not thinking of leaving because there's Americans. That's why you walked out of your stupid dinner party. Jenny, don't be rude. Why did you ask your mother if she believed in ghosts? Did I? You know you did. Why did you ask me? You mustn't tell anyone about the old lady. Promise me. I don't know. It was nothing. Oh, but we mustn't leave here, please. Probably won't have to. Jenny, do you know where Mrs. Betterton lives now? Well, yes. Emily told me. I want you to take a note to her for me. And you'd better try and contact the Spaniards before they leave Bristol today. After last night's disaster, I'm not sure I've got the guts. You're a coward, Daddy. I know. I was very glad to have your note, Mrs. Clare. I'd been wanting to call on you to apologize. I was so abrupt when we first met. You see, it, it upset me terribly leaving this house. I realized too late that I should have stayed on in spite of everything. Jenny, why don't you go out into the garden? It's just a super day. I'd like to have a little chat with Mrs. Betterton. 
Mrs. Betterton, why did you sell this house? Oh, well, for a number of reasons. I don't want to seem rude, but I do wish you'd tell me the truth. Why do you say that? A number of things have happened here that make no sense. I believe this house is haunted. And we've discovered a secret room. Mrs. What are you saying? You didn't know? I haven't the slightest idea what you mean. Well, behind the boy's bedroom, we discovered this small room which was walled up. My husband broke in, and there was a bed there. And when he lifted the cover, there was a skeleton. Why do you think your mother wants to see Grandma? She wants to leave this house. But you can't. Not now you've got the music box. Well, I don't want to leave. Not now until the lady knows you're here. She'll have no one. This comes as a shock to you. Totally. But you do know something, Mrs. Betterton, don't you? I believe you do. Oh, Mrs. Betterton, for the sake of the children, please tell me the truth. Oh, yes, the children. Well, I can appreciate that. That's why I abandoned my home after all these years. This dear old house. Because of Emily. Why? It was having a bad effect on her. Well, you, you must understand, she's my responsibility. So you see, I can't afford to take any chances. Yes, Mrs. Beston, I appreciate your difficulties, but what chances are you referring to? Oh, I should have told you before. I... You see, Emily would keep on talking about an elderly lady who came to her bedroom at night. Well, of course, at first, I thought she was just dreaming, so I didn't pay any attention. But then she stopped talking about her. And at the same time, she became increasingly, how shall I put it, remote. Almost as if she was slipping away into a dream world. And that's why you sold the house? Yes. Well, you thought the house was haunted. Oh, no. I mean, you know how girls are at that age. Your little girl hasn't said anything, has she, about the lady? No. But she's been acting very strangely. Jenny? Please, don't disturb anything. No, of course not. Jenny! Jenny, I'd like a word with you. Jenny, something I want to ask you, and I want a straight answer. You know, you asked me yesterday if I thought this house was haunted. Is it because of an old lady that you've seen? Mrs. Betterton has told me. Oh, Jenny, please tell me the truth. It's so important. Yes, I have seen her. She tucked me into bed. Are you sure you weren't half asleep and it wasn't me you saw? Oh, don't be silly, Mummy. I know you. Anyway, she's an old lady dressed in. Clothes are all old-fashioned. Oh, and she looks so sad. Oh, you must be so frightened. Oh, no, you've got it all wrong. It's not at all frightening. She's a nice old lady. I like her. Emily will tell you how kind she is. I don't remember. Of course you do. You must. Oh, I don't care. Oh, but you told me that... Is there anything else you can tell me, Mrs. Betterton? Well, my dear, I... I do seem... I do seem to remember my father telling me something about a mystery connected with this house. But I don't believe I ever knew what that mystery was. I'm so sorry, my dear. Oh, I want to leave this place. I'd like to leave here right away. We've got nowhere where we can go. We've burnt our boats coming here. My husband's going to speak to the coroner's office about the disposal of the skeleton. Oh, please, Mrs. Clare, please. Before he does that, I would like to speak to Mr. Driscoll. Oh, he's the clergyman here at St. Anne's, and he's an old friend of the family. I'd like his advice. You see, if this should be a, a distant relative of mine, I'd like to think that they had a proper Christian burial. Yes, 
I'll have a word with my husband, but do speak to the clergyman first. I'm sure that's the right idea. skipped a full period. Hey, what's that? I found it. Of course, a sword. Where'd you get it? Don't touch it. You haven't been in that room again. Dad will know. I'll tell him about the helmet. No, don't. I'll tell you. But it must be between ourselves. Yes, I've been in there again, and I found this super sword. I think it must have belonged to whoever was in there. So, Mrs. Betterton denies any knowledge of that room. Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. But she spoke of this old lady who appears, and Jenny admits she's seen her. That's enough, isn't it? You sure that the old lady who appears isn't you? No, we've been through all that. The point is, Jenny's convinced she's seen this kind old lady, and so's Emily. That's why Mrs. Betterton sold the house. She wanted to take Emily away from it all. And you think that that proves that the house is haunted? Well, don't you, now? <sighs> Meanwhile, we have to wait till she sees this clergyman of hers. Well, I had to promise her. After all, a skeleton probably is one of her ancestors. Oh, you're back early. Something on at school tonight, so we were allowed to skip a period. Oh. Look, boys, there's something rather important I'd like to ask you. How would you feel if we had to move again? To America, you mean? Leap here? Why? Nothing like that, I'm afraid. Your mother thinks that this house is haunted. Yes. It's our home now. We love it here. Where have we go? We've hardly moved in. Well, nothing's settled yet, so take it easy. Okay. But we don't want to move. Come on, men. You see how they feel? Yes, of course I do. But if Jenny's health's at stake, I'd leave Buckingham Palace. Yes, but you say that she's not frightened of the old lady, that she likes her. No, but she's been so strange the last day or two sell this house. I know. I think Mum's gone mad. Now we don't dare tell her about the helmet. She couldn't take it. We'll have to do something. We'll have to find out what it's all about. Hi there. Thought I'd look in for the evening concert. Dad, you're not serious about leaving here. Oh, well. Don't worry too much about things at this stage. I want to stay if possible. Let me try to work things out. I'll do my best, but I can't promise anything. Here, read the review of our concert in Bath. Thanks. Well, they liked us. They want us back. See you later. Oh, um, don't go into that room. Okay, bye, Dad. Stephen, I said don't go into that room, okay? Bye. Bye, Dad. Hope it goes well. Let's have a look, Steve. Hey, look, here's Dad's name. It's not really big, is it? it? Wasn't a major concert. Hey, look at this. I'll look later. Which is different. It's a lecture some man's given on ghosts. For the Society of Psychis... Psychical? That's right. For the Society of Psych... Research. An explanation of ghostly phenomena. Here, you read it. An explanation of ghostly phenomena by Milton Guest, the celebrated ghost hunter. What a name. Probably a phony. It's tonight at seven o'clock. Do you think you might be interested in this house? We could tell him about the helmet and everything. That's an idea. Should we tell Mum? We should, but we won't. She'll have a fit. We can tell her where we've been afterwards. Have you seen the boys? Not since tea time. Stephen! Ben! Are you there? Stephen!
that. I, yeah, thank so, you. Yeah, that. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, um, good, good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sure that what you lack in numbers, you'll make up for with enthusiasm. After all, it's the spirit <laughs> that counts. <laughs> uh, tonight, I have special pleasure in introducing a man who really needs no introduction, for he is none other than Milton Guest, the author of Is Anyone There?, well known to us all as a ghost hunter. He is going to talk to us tonight on an explanation of ghostly phenomena. Thank you. No, me. I thought it'd be more like Vincent Price. Hello. Ghost hunting is my business. <laughs> and perhaps the first thing that I ought to make clear is that although there are several types of ghosts, there is no such thing as a ghost. You know, one of those? <laughs> no, no, no. No, you have your... You have your partner, guys which throw things about, scribble messages on walls and make a general nuisance of themselves. And though they might smash the odd glass or coffee cup, they are not harmful. Well, not usually. They are simply trying to draw attention to themselves. And this is common with most types of ghosts. A poltergeist is especially active if there is an adolescent in the house. A young girl or boy who activates or releases the poltergeist without realizing it. Let me give you an example. Jenny, supper's nearly ready. I still can't find the boys, do you? Jenny? Jenny? The best way that I can explain a ghost is to describe it as an imprint on time. It is like a photograph of a dramatic event. And if something exceptional happens, like, uh, like a murder, then the imprint of this is left on the atmosphere. And just as a photograph needs a sensitive plate or a negative, so this ghostly imprint needs a sensitive atmosphere. And just as a photograph needs a photograph, so a ghost needs someone responsive to see it. Children, and it's, uh, it's nice to see you there, children have a special affinity with ghosts. Their minds are more inquiring, and they are prepared to accept the inexplicable. Adults, well, <laughs> I'm afraid that adults are too anxious, too keen to see a ghost, and, and this can be fatal. Probably I'm, I'm too eager myself. It's my greatest ambition to see a ghost, to step up to it and let it pass right through me. That, that would be quite something. <laughs> but the fact that I have not seen a ghost does not mean that I have any doubts. On the evidence that I have gained, reported both by primitive and civilized societies since the beginning of time, I have no hesitation in saying that there are such things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, Miss Wilkie. Tim, oh, thank heavens you're back. The boys have disappeared. Don't worry, darling. They're probably around somewhere. I am worried. They've never done this before. So we were hoping you might be able to help us. Yes, if you were to come home with us, we could show you the secret room and the helmet. And the skeleton. Yeah, but what about your parents? They don't know what to do. They want to leave the house. Because it's haunted. Well, I think it's splendid. It, it sounds most promising. Your dinner I, party... Um, I now don't want would... to interrupt, Mr. Guest, but I did want you to meet our vice chairman. But this is exciting news, Miss Frisbee. Usually I'm called in after it's all over, but this is still happening. No, Mr. Ah, Guest, you mustn't be carried away by make-believe. You... Do you think we ought to phone the police? I think so. It's getting late. Can't do any harm. I'm pretty sure they'll be okay, though. I told you this house is unlucky. They've never done anything like this. Listen, that must be them. 
Stephen, where have you been? It's unforgivable. Who's this? Oh, goody, Mummy. Forgive me. I'm Milton Guest. The boys came to my lecture and asked me lecture? if I'd come... Lecture? What lecture? On ghosts. We thought he might be able to help. You mean to say that you went to the lecture without telling anyone? I certainly did. We were worried sick. I'm not surprised. We're only trying to help. We might have to leave here. And Mr. Guest thinks he can help. I doubt it very much, but, uh... Well, seeing you're here now, you, you better come in. Thank you. And Jenny told us that she'd seen this old lady. And I get this strange experience at the piano. Playing something I've no control over. It's a fantastic story. Well, it may be fantastic to you, but it's grim to us. Yes, and we're heartily sick of it. May I see the secret room and the skeleton? Well, I'd rather you didn't at present. Mrs. Betterton thinks that it may be an ancestor of hers. You see, we ought to contact the coroner's office first. But there's a lot that I can do. Of course, you've got to let the coroner know, and they'll take the skeleton away and try to identify it. They'll be able to tell how old it is, whether it's male or female, and possibly even the cause of death. But, and, and this is where I can help, it is absolutely vital that its spirit be laid to rest before the skeleton is removed from this house. In case it's not identified and it ends up in a museum or, or worse. I've done it before and the house has returned to normal, but you must allow me to do it or the house will still be haunted even after the bones have been taken away. He's right, Dad, I'm sure of it. If you'll just allow me to spend the night in the secret room, uh, I won't be a tick. He must be mad. Then you're going to let him stay? Well, don't see that he can do any harm. He seems rather nice, really. Well, I suppose he knows what he's doing. Good heavens, what's he carrying now? <laughs> it's my ghost hunting kit. <laughs> May I? All right. A ghost hunting kit? Yes. Oh, I'll say you have a special kit to hunt ghosts. Oh, yes. The tape for sealing up windows. Camera and flash. A sensible ball of string. Matches and a candle and a torch in case something blows out the candle. My first ghost. <laughs> I've always believed in them, as you know, but I, I never thought I'd actually meet one face to face. <laughs> what did you see? Well, I'll tell you all later. We, we must have a meeting. Shall we tell him? He'll understand. Tell me what? I thought you told me everything. You won't laugh if we tell you. Of course not. This is very serious. You've seen this face. It appears inside the helmet. What did the ghost you saw in there look like? Well, I didn't see his face very clearly. But I wonder if he could be the same. Your ghost and the face in the helmet? Well, it seems likely, don't you think? Yes. And we found this sword in that room under the bed. Oh. We didn't tell that. You see, we weren't supposed to go back in there. But it's a beauty. It, it, it's got a crest. Breakfast will be ready. Well, did you see anything? Jenny, he's seen a ghost. The old lady? Yes. Well, I've seen her lots of times. Where are the children? It's too quiet for comfort. Well, the boys went out with Mr. Guest to get a photograph developed. And I sent Jenny round to Mrs. Beston with a note. He wants us all round here at 12 o'clock for a council of war, as he calls it. Well, it wouldn't need us. Not 12 midnight, I hope. No. Midday. Good. <clears throat> I believe he's more of a schoolboy than Ben. Council of war. Well, it is something of a battle. Not for long. If your ghost hunter doesn't come up with the right answer, 
Move straight round to the police. It's much better for Emily to be out in the fresh air. Mrs. Beston, this is Milton Guest. How do you he, do? He asked if he could meet you. He's um, an expert on, uh, well, this sort of thing. It's good to see you, Mrs. Betterton. I do hope that you're going to be able to help us. Well, I'll do all I can, but I rather doubt. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mrs. Clare, while I remember it, I have had a word with my friend, the vicar, and he was most sympathetic about that matter of the uh, skeleton. Oh, yes. But, of course, you see, it's a legal matter. Your husband was quite right to uh, notify the police. The person might have been murdered. Once we told the police, then we won't be able to touch anything on that four-post bed. It's, it's a pity about the bloodstains on that tablecloth, Mrs. Clare. Uh, we could have had them analysed. Oh, I couldn't just leave them. I mean, it was a terrifying experience for us all, and then... The American woman was really in a dreadful state. So would you be? Drops of blood falling on your face? Oh, ben, don't be so ghoulish. Anyway, we're not sure that they were blood. And what happens to the skeleton after it's removed? Well, the vicar said that he'd be quite glad to give it Christian burial once the police have released it. Can't we keep it? Certainly not. And that'll be the end of it. Yes, but is it? I mean, that's the whole point. His spirit might still be here, trapped in a state between life and death. And if that is the case, then the ghost is a lost soul, desperately trying to attract attention. Mrs. Betterton, your grandchild, you see, she may have been the only person to have seen that ghost in years. And now your children have seen the ghosts. You mean Jenny and the old lady? Oh, yes, and she's lovely. Oh, sad, oh, but very kind. Those are the same words that Emily used. And the boys have seen the soldier. Well, what's all that about? You know the helmet, Dad. Yes, of course. After I'd polished it, the first night here, it started to shine. Well, it would, wouldn't it? You might listen. All right, it sort of glowed, and a face appeared inside it. The face of a soldier. Sounds terrifying. Look, I brought this down. I found it on the bed. Stephen, I thought I told you not to go into that room. Yes, but this is really important. I mean, don't you think that that, that proves that the skeleton on the bed must have been a soldier and that the helmet and, and, and the sword belong to him? You see, <laughs> you see, I, I saw them both in that room last night. Oh. My first ghosts. <laughs> I can't begin to thank you enough. I tried to take a picture, but it didn't come out, did it? But I really saw them. An elderly woman comforting this young man, a soldier. And I believe that the old lady is the same one that Jenny has seen, and that the soldier is the face in the helmet. Why, they, they might even be mother and son. Mrs. Beston, ha have you any idea who they might be? I, I've been trying to think. So hard. I do remember there was a family secret, but I never knew what it was. Could it have something to do with the troubles in Bristol? In 1831? At Bristol Rats. I knew I'd seen this crest before. In the picture. You can't see it on the sword, but here. Yes, it's here, on the saddle. It looks the same. Mrs. Betterton, what can you tell us about that picture? It was handed down. All has been in the house. I can remember asking my father about it, but he always managed to change the subject. So, well, I thought it upset him, and I stopped asking. I, I assumed it had something to do with the riots. A hundred and fifty people were killed. Oh, no, nothing like that. Even so, my father said it was the worst night in Bristol's history. I do remember that much. That's right. I'm sure over a hundred people were killed. Ben. And it was all so unnecessary. I mean, the authorities were so confused that they didn't even tell the dragoons what to do. The dragoons? Yes. The third dragoons, I think it was. And then the man in the picture could be the man upstairs. The young officer. 
The face is not very clear. Yes, it's a pity about that. Why was he blocked up in the room? Well, that's what we've got to find out. But whatever happens, the man upstairs must find the piece that he is looking for before the bones are moved. And this must be done on the stroke of midnight. I knew it. It's all right. I know what I'm doing. Are you absolutely certain that there are ghosts? And that there isn't a perfectly logical explanation. Of course they're ghosts. And I hope they never go away. They haven't done us any harm. Yes. Yes, well, of course, you're right. I mean, there's usually an explanation. <laughs> the ghost of a white lady seen at midnight near a bridge by a number of villagers in Ireland turned out to be... A swan. Yes, how did you know? I read it somewhere. Oh, yes, well, you're quite right. It was a swan. But I don't suppose you heard about the flying elephant. No. Good, no. Not many people have. Once upon a time, there was an aeroplane, you know, one of those. It was flying several thousand feet above India. The pilot, sitting there, minding his own business. <laughs> Suddenly, there was a break in the clouds. He looked through the window, and I don't suppose you'll be able to guess what he saw. An elephant? Ah, <laughs> my boy, yes. <laughs> there it was, a great, enormous elephant charging towards him. And he turned to his co-pilot, and he said, do you see what I see? And the co-pilot said, Yes, there's no doubt about it. We've got ourselves an elephant. Well, by then, the pilot was thoroughly alarmed. He got on the blower to the navigator, and he'd seen the same thing. There was no doubt about it. There was an elephant flying in the sky. Now, what was it? I mean, was it a trick of time? You know, some people say that the Loch Ness Monster is a ghost image from the past. And other people say that flying saucers, yes, even flying saucers, are ghosts of the future. You see? Memory in reverse. <laughs> but in this case, not a bit of it. No. When the pilot landed, he reported the incident and was given a perfectly simple explanation. There had been a religious festival held that day at an Indian temple which honoured the elephant god of Ganesh. And the high spot of the ceremony was when they inflated this huge elephant balloon, life-size, an enormous great thing. <laughs> the only trouble was that it burst free from its moorings <laughs> and was blown upwards by the hot air from a bonfire. Though so don't ask me what, 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 now listen. People will believe anything, eh? People see ghosts because they want to see ghosts, yes? But not in this case, no, I would, state my reputation that the ghosts of Clifton House are real. And now, if I may, I'd like to borrow your two chaps to help me to get the room ready. And uh, then we have to go on to the reference library. Is that all right with you? Yeah, it's time I went. I go and find Emily. <laughs> She's been so much better since we left this house. any outside interference tonight. The other day, upon a stair, I saw a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. <laughs> oh, how I wish he'd go away. Mr. Guest. Yes? There's something I don't understand. Fire away. You say ghosts are like a memory picture. Yes, that's right. They made an impression on the atmosphere when something unusual happened. Like a like a footprint on time. But that makes them like something that doesn't move, like a photograph. <laughs> well, I don't know all the answers. But let's imagine that we're like computers. When a person dies, then the computer in us is switched off. Unless the person happened to die in unusual circumstances. And then the computer goes on sending signals. It's, it's like a form of visual telepathy from the past. It, it's possible that a ghost is a thought from the past that 
that we can visualize. I still don't understand. <laughs> well, I don't blame you because it's rather hard to explain. But I believe that in a hundred years' time, ghosts will seem quite ordinary. I mean, look at it this way. A hundred years ago, if someone had suggested that we'd have men walking on the moon, and that we'd be able to see them at the same time on a square box in the corner of the living room, they would have thought he was mad. They'd probably have locked him up. <laughs> and I believe that soon ghosts will seem just as commonplace as that television set in the corner of the room, and rather similar. A picture that is held, like a television picture, which seems to linger for a split second after the set is switched off. Unhappy. Well, I don't think they're a bundle of fun, which is why they need our help. Especially the sort that is uh, trying to contact us. Now, let me give you an example. Now, you're interested in the great Isambard Kingdom Brunel, aren't Does you? Does he have a ghost? <laughs> Not as far as I'm aware, but one of his ships did. You know the Great Eastern? You remember her? The largest ship of her time? But she was an unlucky ship. And the Great Eastern was jinxed from the moment that a welder and his young assistant were vanished while the ship was being built. When she was launched at Greenwich, she stuck in the Thames. And five men, five men were scalded to death in her engine room on her maiden voyage. And finally, there was such a run of bad luck and so many rumours of ghosts that the that she was sold for scrap in 1889. And it was then that the skeletons of the welder and the young boy were found trapped. It was said, and I have no reason to disbelieve this, that their spirits had cursed the ship with bad luck. The bones were blessed and taken away to be buried, but it was too late to help the Great Eastern. But we mustn't be too late to help him. Come on. We've only got a few hours left. We have to wait for our Miss Prothero. Sounds like woolen stockings, short grey hair, and very yes, kind to animals. Oh. Oh, yes, you, you certainly can. Good afternoon. Mr. Guest. Yes, that's right. How did you know? Well, I was at one of your lectures. I enjoyed it very much. How splendid. Well, do sit down. But I should warn you, I'm no expert on the supernatural. Well, we call it paranormal now. <laughs> but it's the natural, not the supernatural explanations that interest me. Now, we want a few facts on local history, and uh, so we've come to you. Yes, I know. What period? Mm. Oh, the Bristol Riots of 1831. Yes. Well, where would you like me to start? Well, it, at the beginning, if you could. Uh, oh, these are my two friends, Stephen and Benjamin Clare. Hello. Well, I'll do my best. Thank you. She hasn't got wooden stockings. I can see that. Here we are. These will help. Well, the riots were sparked off when Sir Charles Wetherall arrived in Bristol on Saturday, October the 29th, 1831, to preside over the Assizes. Well, he was the recorder of Bristol. And most Bristolians hated him because he opposed the reform bill, which was going to give more people the chance to vote. He rode into town escorted by 300 police, and followed by a hooting crowd until he reached the mansion house in Queen Square. Well, by now, thousands of rioters were filling up the square and were out for trouble. The mayor, Mr. Charles Pinney, tried to talk to them from outside the custom house, but was pelted with stones. Meanwhile, Sir Charles Wetherall escaped by the roof, disguised as a woman, and scarpered straight back to London. Well, the authorities then read the Riot Act and called in the military, the Dragoons. Oh, is this the sort of thing you wanted? Yes, especially anything about the Dragoons. That's exactly what we're looking for. Oh, well, there was a lot of confusion about them. Well, they arrived to keep order, but one of the soldiers fired. Killing a man was probably harmless. Well, this gave the rioters the grievance they needed. They burst into the mansion house, threw out the furniture, broke into the cellars where they found stacks of wine and got roaring drunk. <laughs> well, this is what it says here. 
Inflamed with liquor and seeking revenge for the man who was killed, they forced the soldiers back. To appease them, their commanding officer ordered the dragoons to retreat to Canesham. Well, consequently, the dragoons withdrew, leaving Bristol to the mercy of the rioters. Death was in the cup of drunkenness. The swift sword of the Avenger was soon to pierce them through, and the fires which lighted up their feast were to be their funeral pile. Heady stuff. Not as heady as the wine. Well, this was the consequence of that. Drawn from the top of Brandon Hill with most of the corporation buildings on fire. The Bishop's Palace, the Mansion House, the Custom House, Bridewell, the Excise Office. All were reduced to ruins before order was restored and the riots came to an end. Well, the commanding officer of the Dragoons was court-martialed for dereliction of duty. In January 1832, 81 prisoners were brought to trial. He should be in bed. I didn't faint. I was dizzy. You did faint. Miss Prothero said so. It was only a small faint. Hardly a faint at all. Ben, don't upset yourself. Are you sure that the face that you were looking at in the book is the same face that you've seen in the helmet? I recognized it too, but I didn't faint. It was a picture of the commanding officer of the 3rd Dragoon Guards. Till he ran away. He was a coward. No, I don't think so. The only orders sent to him went astray, and he refused to open fire without orders. He was probably on their side. The rioters promised to disperse if he took the Dragoons away, which he did. After the soldiers had gone, the rioters went back on their word. He was probably in a tricky position. Perhaps he was too weak. Perhaps he overestimated their strength. Perhaps he was just frightened. Anyway, his second in command took over, returned with the troops, and restored order. But by then, the damage had been done. What happened to the commanding officer? Miss Prothero said he was court martialed for cowardice. Yes, but he disappeared on the second day of his court-martial. There were rumours that he'd been wounded, or even that he'd killed himself. But he was never seen again. Do you know what his name was? Captain Bretherton. It's as if he heard you. They know you're trying to get rid of them. No, Jenny, we're trying to help them. That's what you say. Jenny, don't be rude. Mr. Guest, I'm sorry if I seem stupid, but does all this really prove anything? I believe it does. Captain Bretherton didn't just vanish into thin air. No, I, I think he came home, here, and was hidden by his mother. Perhaps he was wounded, and then he died here, still hidden by his mother. Probably she was scared. After all, she was harboring the deserter. Then the room was walled up, and... And then she died. You don't think there's a connection with Mrs. Betterton, do you? Well, yes, I was wondering that. I think there must be. Bretherton, Betterton. I think the relatives changed the name because of the family disgrace. It's just enough to put people off the scent. And now I must make my preparations for tonight. Uh, just before you go, uh, boys upstairs, please. I'll, I'll be up in a moment. I hope you won't take this the wrong way, but uh, enough's enough. I think it's best for all of us if uh, you left everything to me from now on. But I have this duty to perform tonight. I think that's a lot of mumbo-jumbo. Even now, after all that's happened in this house, you still don't believe any of it, do It's you? just that I think there's an explanation. I'll start on the first stroke of midnight, which signifies the dominion of the mind over the elements. It will help me in overcoming the demons of the air, spirits of fire, phantoms of water, and above all, the ghosts of the earth. Mm, I suppose so. It must be done. Why are you dressed like that? Oh, white is the symbol of purity. It 
attracts the good spirits and repels the evil ones. What are you going to do at midnight? Utter a few simple words that are used in such cases to put the earthbound spirits to rest. Well, I must go back in. Mr. Clare, would you move the wardrobe, please, and, and seal me in? Good luck. Thank yes, you. I wish I could watch. Oh, better not. You stay with your father. Rejoicing that thou mayst find thy rightful place and state of everlasting peace. chooses to remain earthbound and haunt this spot. Go thy way, rejoicing that thou mayst find thy rightful place and state of everlasting peace. Rest in peace. It will be peaceful now. Thank goodness for that. Thank goodness indeed. You can sleep now. I must say, I didn't get much sleep. Not after all that. I'm not surprised. I slept better. Well, there's nothing to fear now. we better clear that room up, though. The police might not understand if they saw all those chalk marks. <laughs> no, I shouldn't think they would. I haven't the foggiest idea what I'm going to tell them. Oh, well, tell them how you found the secret room and the skeleton. You might tell them about Mrs. Betterton and that we think that the skeleton could be a distant relative of hers. Oh, we don't want to cause her any trouble. The police are going to think we're a load of nutcases. I can't say I blame them. They're not interested in so-called ghosts. Just that wretched skeleton upstairs. Well, I hope he gets a proper burial after all this. Oh, well, you can go ahead with that now. You still sound skeptical. You can't be, Dad. Yes, I am. I don't understand your part in all of this. And as for everything else, the poltergeists and the ghosts, well, I just don't know. Well, at least that's something. If you admit that you don't know, do you think we'll ever see the face in the helmet again? I very much doubt it. I hope not. By the way, has anyone looked at the picture this morning? Why? Whatever for? Come and see. 
I looked at it before breakfast this morning. It may be my imagination, but I think it's changed. Changed? It looks the same to me. How? It has. Look at the face. What about the face? It's clear, I'm sure. It's the face in the helmet, isn't it, Stephen? Yes, it's the same face. Well, it does look different somehow. Nonsense. Pictures don't change. It hasn't changed by a single brushstroke, as far as I can see. It, it doesn't play the music anymore. Well, now that the officer, the spirit of Captain Bretherton, has been released, he doesn't need his tune, his uh, regimental march anymore. Oh, Jenny. How did that tune go? Let's see. What's on? I don't seem to remember it. Yet I played it, even when I didn't want to. Or did I imagine it? No, you didn't, Mr. Clare. And neither did Jenny. Oh, well. I'll keep an open mind. Yes, well, I... I really must be on my way. Do you have to go? I'm afraid so, Ben. I have to get back to London. Can't you wait for the police? Oh, well, uh, let's say that I'm at their disposal. I don't suppose they'd be very thrilled to see me. Ghost hunters and the police don't, don't really mix. Mr. Clare? Yes? I'm a police officer from the coroner's office. Oh, you are quick getting here. I wasn't sure if you'd be able to make it, especially on a Sunday. Any time, day or night, when we get an emergency call. Sell them off duty in our line of business. This is Mr. Knight, our photographer. I'm afraid we all got up late. Uh, we had a late night. Uh, would you like some tea, coffee? No, thank you, sir. We just had some at the mortuary. Yes. Well, I'll lead the way, shall I? If you will. It's upstairs. I wish I could go up there with them. No, you'll only get in the way. After all, I found the secret room. I found the window. No. Suppose they want to know about the helmet. And the sword. Oh, all right then, but, but do stay in your own room, would you? I don't want to go upstairs. Can I borrow your torch, then? Thank you. Nothing's been disturbed. Not that I know of. We just drew the curtains, but they fell apart, and the window was broken trying to open it. I see you sealed it up again. Yes. All yours, Mr. Knight. Now, uh, you say this, uh, this room was walled up when you came here. That's, uh, that's rather curious, isn't it? Yes, uh, I suppose it is. Your surveyor didn't do a very good job. No. We found out about it when the children spotted the window from the garden outside. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't a room. So we started the search. And we found this place where there'd been a door. That's right. It's my son, Stephen. This is the boy's bedroom. I'm Ben. So we broke the plaster down and went inside. Ah, uh, where I found the skeleton. And this was last night? Well, no, uh, a couple of days ago. You should have informed us at once. Yes, I suppose I should have. You see, um... My wife believes that this house is haunted. Haunted? <sighs> Cover everything, Mr. Knight. You should be notified immediately. I know, I'm sorry. I just thought that uh, as the bones had lain there so long, it wasn't so urgent. Oh, well, that's as may be. It certainly seems unlikely anyone living could have been responsible. Mr. Guest found out all about that. What's that? Who's Mr. Guest? Uh, he's a friend of ours, uh, something of an historian. He's been trying to help us find out who the skeleton, uh, well, who the man might have been. You can leave all that to us, sir. We're equipped for that sort of thing. But it did find out. Well, that's very interesting, Sonny Jim. I should be taking a full statement from you in due course. I think you two better buzz off. Okay. Oh, well, Mr. Clare, uh, better not have the lads around when we remove the body. Okay. We can manage on our own now, I think. Thank you. I'll get changed then. Oh, we'll, uh, we'll have to establish the next of kin, of course. 
That could be Mrs. Betterton, the former owner. I'll include all that in your statement, sir. Fine. I'll leave it to you, then. They haven't a clue, have they? I, uh, there you are. I, I thought you'd gone. Uh, look, um, I think we'd uh, better get the doctor to look at this before we cut you. Yeah. Right. In consequence of Mr. Guest's visit to the reference library, you have reason to believe that the deceased could be a Captain Bretherton, involved in the Bristol Riots of 1831. The Bristol Riots of 1831. Now, how could you possibly know that? Well. We think he's the man in the picture. His family used to live here. The crest on the sword is the same as the crest here on the saddle. Sword? What sword? We found it in the secret room. And this was in the room with the skeleton? Yes. There's no law against taking swords from secret rooms. Stephen, please be quiet. This may be evidence. Sorry. No harm's been done, though, has it? I don't know. I'll uh, take possession of this. Thank you. I hope we can have it back. I expect so, Sonny. Is that all you can tell me? Yes, I think so. What happens next? I'll keep you notified. You may be needed at the inquest. Inquest? Nothing to worry about. Just a formality. Thank you, Mr. Clare. Mrs. Clare. And, uh, children. Almost unusual. Goodbye. <sighs> Dad says they're going to take the boons away in a plastic bag. Oh, how gruesome. Oh, you are silly, Mum. How else? In a handbag. Oh, well, you seem your old self again. Yes, the pain <laughs> in the neck. I told the policeman about our ghost upstairs, but uh, I doubt if he understood. He didn't take it very seriously. No imagination. Oh, I just want to forget all about it. Unfortunately, the story's bound to get out. Can't stop it now. We're not going to get a moment's peace, you know. You know what people are like. Every crank and sensation seeker will be at the door. Good fun. No, it won't be. You mean you are famous? I can't wait to tell them at school. Oh, no, you mustn't tell anyone. Any of you. Well, I'm not telling anyone what I know. Doesn't seem right. Right or wrong, I must get on with lunch. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 Mum, mm -hmm. now they've taken the bones away, do you think I could move into the secret room? Oh, well, it's in a dreadful state. I'll clean it up, I'll do all that. Well, I'm not very keen on the idea. Mm -hmm. Why not? It would be a good idea. Well, after all that's happened up there, you said I could have a room of my own as soon as it was possible. And it'd mean I'd have one too. Well, I think it's a great idea. service is really very moving. Very. Mm. Considering the corpse has been dead for over a hundred years. Tim, you're becoming cynical. Oh, just unsentimental. After all, no one knew the man. One could hardly be expected to shed a tear. Well, Mrs. Betterton was crying. Ah, well, that's different. Uh, she was a relative of sorts. It was jolly good of her to let us keep the sword. Mm, I'm not sure I really want to be reminded. Don't worry. It belongs there, really. Looks good, doesn't it? Yes. Captain Bretherton's sword. You've got his helmet, Steve. And, and you didn't want me to buy it at the auction. You haven't paid me the 50p you bought All right, yet. I will. And I'm glad I bought the picture. And I'm not sure that hasn't brought more trouble than it's worth, too. Well, you'll get to love it. You won't even notice it's there. Are you really going to do this television interview thing? Yes, I think so. No harm's done. Inexperienced with the boys. Yes, you must do it. Yes, please. Oh, I just can't stand the thought of it all being made public. People are interested in ghosts. Mm. Well, I hope they don't make fun of it. We won't let them. Oh, well. You two boys can go upstairs and change if you want to.
You're right. I was a bit cynical about the service. I shouldn't have been. At last, after all he's been through, he's had a decent burial. All that mumbo-jumbo with Milton Guest never did seem quite right, did it? Well, at least he discovered who the real skeleton was. Yes. Well, Captain Bretherton, you deserve some peace. You know, that picture hasn't changed in any way whatsoever. It's all in your imagination. Such things don't happen. They can't. unless I tell you. You're in my room all the time. Don't be stupid. I have to go through your room to get to mine. I know. It's like a station. Oh, stop whining. Come on, let's have a game. Hey, Steve. Watch it. And you're going to be gone. I like the way you've done up your room. It is nice, isn't it? It was your room once. Oh, it seems so long ago. I know. But you still remember her? Who do you mean? The old lady. Not really. I don't think of her anymore. Come on. Let's go outside. We don't want her listening. <laughs> Mystery. Timothy Clare, West Country pianist, is interviewed tonight on television. I do wish they wouldn't refer to me as a West Country pianist. Yes, it's about time. Put the telly on. Have you heard any more about the American tour? No, I'm not too disappointed. Tonight, we've an astonishing story to tell you about ghostly goings-on right here in Bristol. Not only a haunted house, but a skeleton and a secret room. Well, with me is the owner of the house, the well-known West Country musician, Timothy Clare, and two of his children, Stephen and Ben, who say they've actually seen a ghost. Well, what happened? I saw the first ghost, the face of this soldier. It appeared after he bought an old helmet at an auction in the house. And my sister, Jenny, saw another ghost, an old lady, and she had a frightening I'm glad I didn't go. Uh, Nobody will believe her. She said it rather good the, uh, the box. The ghost was a friend of They put makeup on me. I thought we she'd all be quiet. quiet. Well, what about you, Mr. Clare? Do you believe in ghosts? Um, well, frankly, I don't know what to believe. Certainly some very strange things happened to myself and my family. But you did employ a ghost hunter? Uh, not employed. He asked if he could investigate. He was positive that the house was haunted. And could he explain what was going on? Oh, yes, he believed he could. He was very persuasive. He believes that uh, we're surrounded by millions of thought forms, uh, transmitted not only those by, by those who are living, but by those who lived long ago, and that the atmosphere can recall such thoughts. Like a gramophone record. <laughs> and I suppose they can be played like a record, too. Oh, yes. I believe reproduction is possible in places where, for instance, there's been extreme emotion like um, a battlefield. Uh, one of our ghosts was a soldier. That's what it's been all about. These emotions were so strong that they left a, a lasting impression on the atmosphere. All right, let's say for the moment that there are such things, but 
In the end, on the face of it, all the evidence of the supernatural is a bit weak, don't you think? I mean, look at some of the claims. What have we got? Messages from Red Indian squalls, tables floating in the air, spoons bending of their own accord. The evidence is uh, a bit pathetic, don't you think? Yes, I agree. I don't think it's worth the trouble. Why did you agree with him? Be quiet. I want to listen. Shh. But we know these things happen. We saw them. But surely it's necessary to find out why these particular things happened. Yes, uh, I always look for a, uh, a logical explanation rather than a natural one. What's the difference? Well, uh, logic is cut and dried, whereas a uh, natural explanation reveals things around us that perhaps we don't yet understand. We couldn't imagine an electric light bulb a few hundred years ago, could we? The Earth is more alive than we realize. <laughs> and that goes for ghosts too, it seems. But, Mr. Clare, can you explain what happened in your house? <laughs> I don't think I'm qualified. I think it's enough to say that it happened. But what did happen? I understand your children were the first to realize that something was wrong. Well, Nothing was wrong. They, started, they trusted people. us. That's why we saw the them. Day, there was an oh, I knew they wouldn't the understand. Let me explain further. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, blast. What a time to go wrong. Started to play again. 